everybody come in from uh, Russia, Zabi, Maga, Tamar, all of our, all the teammates from Russia, Frank Yeager, Marlon Moraes, everybody's, every, uh, everybody's on and popping, everybody's uh, getting ready to compete at a high level and it's just making for a great camp. Yeah, you've won world titles with all the other promotions, what does it mean to get the one championship, which is being held by Edward Belayne right now? I made a spot on my shelf in my office, I'd, em I'd empty the shelf, I moved everything aside and um, I've already envisioned uh, being crowned that belt. It's already in my head. I just need it. Uh, I just need it in my head. Once it's in my head, it's, it's already a foregone conclusion. Have you already like started scouting the other guys or looking at the other fighters in your vision, or have you thought about that, or are you taking it one fight at a time? No, absolutely. They've all been fighting, and uh, I'm a competitive. I'm competitive by nature. I've already been watching their fights. Edward. Uh, who else? Timothy, the guys that I, the guys, uh, Aoki, all the guys in my division. So um, I got my eyes on everyone. How crazy of an accomplishment would that be if you win the title at once, seeing the other titles you've won at the other organizations? When I do, it'll be, it'll be, it'll be amazing. It'll be amazing because it's one thing to dominate a promotion. And they continue winning one promotion, but it's another thing to travel the world and try to fight the best guys all over from everywhere. Because if you're a true fan of martial arts and you know fighting and, and, and you're a fighter, you know that the best fighters are all over the world. And they're not necessarily the most popular. The best fighters are, some of them are in the jungles of Brazil, unknown, and some of them are in the foothills of Dagestan. I can't even pronounce their name. They're everywhere, and uh, I think it's important to go everywhere, to test yourself against everyone, to see when I'm done, I'll know my truth. So good or bad, I'll know my truth. Why are you going to compete at? Because I know they don't have like the weigh-in. I mean, the weigh-in. Yeah, they won't. So uh, the weight, uh, the limit's 169. 169. 155 to 169. So 169 is the weight. How, how is that a new experience for you? That's great because uh, you normally fight me. Uh, fight week when I go in uh, to fight when I was fighting in, in the other organizations um, I would come in fight week around 170 before I cut all the water so it's basically I'm skipping the whole dehydration I'm skipping a whole unhealthy process that we all put ourselves through before we go to compete at a high level so I think it's just gonna add to stellar performance I think it's gonna add to an amazing fight uh, add to conditioning add to explosiveness. I'm, I'm excited to do it. So I know there's an argument uh, within MMA to add more weight classes to make it more more even because the weight cuts can get so deep and you see this disparity between the athletes like body size when they cut from a certain weight. What's your, I guess, your take on that? We have to follow the systems that set in place, right? I mean, is this a good precedent that you feel there's I think it's incredible. Yeah. I mean, imagine, imagine there being a process that's so detrimental that fighters are nearly dying. They're nearly dying. They're going in the hospital a day before a fight, nearly dying. They're about to compete at the highest level of the highest of the and the mecca of the sport, and they're about to die before they go compete at that level. That should be cut out. I'm sorry. That should be that should be rid of. And it's rid of. One championship got rid of it. Now we're fully hydrated. We've all agreed to skip this process that we know is dangerous, that we know is detrimental, that fighters get fined, and uh, fights are pushed off. So fans are penalized, fighters are penalized, and promotions are penalized because of this process. So we eliminate it. We eliminate it. We all agreed we're just going to be accountable and responsible to weigh in. Uh, fully hydrated at what we should be, what, should, what we walk around at. I think it's incredible. I love it across the board. I love it. I love it. Now you're signing with one took a lot of people by surprise. And this is like me uh, inquiring why. Because it seemed you had everything made in the UFC. You had a good deal. 
uh, popularity, you were very highly ranked, so, so why come over here? I think, all, I think all fighters should become free agents. I don't think any fighter should re-sign a deal without testing the free market and knowing what we're truly worth. Um, okay, with that, did you feel you were undervalued? Huge, yeah. huge, and, and not only myself. I'm not speaking for myself. I'm speaking uh, for fighters in a whole. Bellator, UFC, all over. Fighters are severely undervalued. Promotions are making billions of dollars, and fighters are still making 10 grand, you know, 20 grand, 30 grand. That's that's kind of bullshit. And uh, if I did resign, if I did um, do what I felt what I felt was wrong, I would just be part of the problem. I wouldn't so be you part saw of the this solution. Deal, you're like, this is bullshit. This I, I I thought it was bullshit for years. Yeah. You know, I thought the pay in, in MMA in general was bullshit. You know, it, the fighters need to be shared with more. If for promotion, if promotions are making billions. There, need, there needs to be a proper sharing, and uh, th that won't happen until promotions are forced for it to happen. The only way to force them to do that is become a free agent, and uh, I, 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 and I encourage all fighters to become a free agent and go all across the world and see what their true worth is. And How do you think they can get away with it? In your opinion, they're able to get away with it. How do I feel what? That they're able to, to lock people in like that, get away with what you're calling I don't I don't think I don't think there's a problem with the contracts. I don't think I think if you sign the contract you have you're obligated to um, you're, to fulfill the obligations of that contract. I don't think you should be able to get out. I don't. If you signed it and it's for a set amount of fights in a set amount of years, you're obligated to it. But I think it's foolish to re-sign that without knowing how much the market has changed. So when you, when you went over there and you saw their offer, you were like, like, I should have been making this for years. I don't, I, I'm not saying I should have been made after years. I'm saying that every year the, mar the, the value goes up and up and up. And if you're continuing to sign and you're continuing to fight for the same exact money or nearly the same exact money for a four year span, you're way behind the curve. Way behind the curve. That was the main thing then for you. The main thing for me was knowing the sport has grown exponentially and the pay hasn't. And fighters need to. Um, need to recognize that and take advantage of it. Because they deserve it. All fighters do. I'm not I'm not speaking for myself. I'm speaking as a whole. Maybe finally one question from uh, from wise guys about other Pats or Genos. Neither. If you had to you head to Philadelphia, you go to Steve Prince's Stakes. Uh, you, you. you all you all know if you're if you're a Philadelphian you go to Steve Prince of Stakes. If you got well, there's one in Northeast. There's one in Northeast on Conley Street, so that's where you go if you want a real Philly cheese thing. <laughs>